Happy Wednesday, First Baptist family. I am glad to get to talk to you today. I want to tell you some schedule modifications going forward. Our uh, reopening committee met on Monday, and we are monitoring daily, really, the uh, spread of the coronavirus in our community and trying to be wise and at the same time trying to give you the opportunity to be back here in person as quickly as we can. So here is our schedule as of today. On this Sunday, which is uh, January 17, and the following Sunday, which is January 24, we will be online only, online only at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., both of those two Sundays. We're continuing to look at the early life of Jesus. This week, we will go with him uh, to the temple when he is uh, 12 years old. And next week, we will go with him to the waters of the Jordan River, where he was baptized by John the Baptist. I think you're going to learn some interesting ideas, uh, some interesting facts about the life of Jesus as we go forward. Now, we are going to make another modification because our youth, we believe, with school starting back next week, we want to get our youth back in person as quickly as we can. So, beginning next Wednesday night, which is January 20th, uh, and the following week, the 27th, our youth will meet up in the youth room at 6 o'clock with our interim youth minister, Devin Beatty. And uh, they'll have some, some time together for fellowship and some activities and some Bible study at 6 o'clock next Wednesday, the 20th and the 27th, which brings us to January the 31st. January 31st is Youth Sunday in our church we're going to have some of our high school seniors speaking to us, some of our other youth leading us, and we really want that to be in person if it is at all possible. And right now, our plan is to have 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock worship in person and online on January 31st. Now, we're not going to start Sunday school back just yet because uh, some of the smaller groups meet in confined spaces with one exception, we are going to have our youth here on Sunday morning, the 31st, at 10 a.m. up in the youth room. Since it's Youth Sunday, it sure makes sense to do that. Now, if you're a parent of a middle schooler, uh, we'll find you a place to hang out while they're in youth. Uh, but we hope to get back to a more normal schedule soon. A lot of you are getting vaccinated. I hear good reports, and I hope that continues. But that's where we are for right now. So remember, the 17th and the 24th, online only, the 20th and the 27th, youth up in the youth room on Wednesday night at 6, and the 31st at 9 and 11, uh, youth-led worship. And then if things continue to hold where they are or improve, we'll continue with both worship services at 9 and 11 uh, into February, and then we'll keep you posted. So, that's where we are, and I'm grateful for your interest, I'm grateful for your prayers, I'm grateful for your encouragement, and I'm grateful for your wisdom. Well, I haven't talked to you in a few days. It's been a rough week in America, hasn't it? And nobody knows what the next week is going to bring. Tensions are running high all throughout our country. People who have strong beliefs are not doing a very good job at tempering those when we talk, are we? It seems like social media has made it very, very easy to vent our righteous indignation or just to flat get mad. I think that's regrettable, particularly when we bear the name of Christ. The only time Jesus ever showed that sort of indignation was when he cleansed the temple, when he went to that which was a house of prayer and cleaned out the money changers and the traders who were exploiting the poor who came there to worship. The way that happened is this. You had to give an acceptable sacrifice. The people who ran the money changing desk and the sacrificial animal desk, they determined whether or not your sacrifice was acceptable. And if not, they'd sell you another one at a higher price. Also, when you brought your money, you couldn't just bring any old money to the temple to give your tithe. You had to exchange it into a temple currency. And guess what? There was some profit on that as well. So these times of uh, 
indignation and anger in the life of Jesus are limited to that one moment. Now, he was frustrated with other times. But I asked last week in a Facebook post, what would Jesus do? What would he have done last Wednesday when that, uh, that outburst happened at the Capitol that took five lives? What would he have done next week in the days to come as our nation faces transition? Just exactly what would Jesus do? Well, I know one thing the Bible tells us in Psalm 133, verse 1. It says this, Behold how good and how pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. Those words are 3,000 years old. I'm not naive enough to think that the psalmist wrote those words when everybody got along and they all just sang kumbaya and held hands. I'm convinced that those words were written in times of duress and struggle and tension and unease. But I'm equally convinced that those words have something to say to us today. When we gather in this wonderful room, which is 94 years old this year, we come together as Republicans or Democrats. We come together as young or old. We come together as black or white we come together as all sorts of different dynamics. But when we come in this place, we're to exemplify those words in Psalm 133.1. Behold how good and how pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. And it thrills my soul to know that as long as I've been with you, that's the model you have brought to this wonderful room when we've sung, when we've prayed, when we've read scripture, when we've celebrated, and when we've bid farewell to those who've come to know the presence of the Lord in eternity. I hope we will take that spirit beyond this room to whatever rooms you enter this week and in the weeks to come, and that followers of Jesus will ask ourselves a couple of questions. First, what would Jesus do? I think you and I know what he would do. But if you don't, read the Gospels closely. And second, is the example we're living by one that brings together unity? Lord knows we need both of those qualities right now. Let's pray. Lord, we ask your blessing upon our country, even in times of, times of tragedy times of sadness, times of violence, times of disruption that seemingly have been going on for months. Help us to be witnesses of your grace and mercy and love and unity as we pray in the strong name of Jesus. Amen.